Hi everybody and welcome to Fergie3D. I'm your host Fergie and I'm doing a sound check on my new mic so we'll see if it's as echoey as it was before. On today's episode we're going to be talking Ender 2. Hopefully we fix that. And we're going to talk about mega prints. I did my first 73 hour mega print. Didn't go the way I expected it to. We'll talk about that and how to resolve the issues I had with that as well. So everybody sit back, relax, and enjoy Fergie3D. So today we're going to cover Mega Prints, the Ender 2, and the Pengolins. Pengolins, I know it's a strange thing. I've found it on Thingverse, and it's kind of the coolest little fidget thing that I printed out. I printed out about four of them. Um, if you have a CR10, you can print them out full size. If not, you can set the body, uh, print the body out in sections, and then put them together. So the first one I'm going to show you is one that was put together in three sections and then snapped together. And this is a pingal right here. It's kind of cool. Um, it prints all the hinges, and then you just take it off the bed. And when you take it off, it's ready to be curled up in a ball. And like I say, it makes a really great fidget. You can sit there and move it like this over and over. But this seemed a little bit big in my hands. I know for kids, it was a little bit big as well. So when I printed it out full size in one piece, I did it at 75%, and I came up with this guy here, all right? This seems to fit the hand much better. You can curl up a little ball, you can have him like this. You can sit there and pet him. He's kind of cute, and uh, everybody picks it up and they can't help but start using it over and over and over. This is a Pangolin. It can be found in Thingverse for free. Print it out and have a lot of fun with it because it is kind of cool the way it just seems to form and curl up in your hand. It's really great. So check that out. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the Ender 2 because I've been having a lot of problem with the Ender 2 and I haven't, after six weeks, I haven't even dialed it in yet. So let's take a look at that. Okay guys, let's talk Ender 2. Got an Ender 2 about six weeks ago. Had problems with printing. And I went on the website for Creality and really couldn't find any kind of tech support. Frequently asked questions. I mean, I was really lost on their website. So I didn't want to give it up, but I did go to Amazon. And I hit a return request because I didn't want to give it up. But I just couldn't print anything out. Well, the next day, I actually got a call from customer service from um, China. They called on the WhatsApp. And I started talking to the customer service representative. And at first, they thought it was the filament. So I tried two different filaments. I've got 3D Solution printing filament. And I also have some Hatchbox. But they said that um, really the best filament for this is the Creality filament. Well, it just so happens in the box that I had for this, I still have some Creality filament that they gave me. And I thought that that would work well. So I asked them if I use this filament, is that good enough? Is it going to work perfectly? They said, well, yes, of course it will work perfectly if you use the filament. So I tried it, and of course it didn't. So they sent me a G-code for their Lucky Cat. It was supposed to test the filament in the nozzle. And we tried it, and it came out horrible. I mean, it would only print out basically the, the base of this. Let me bring this up. Too close. There we go. And then it would clog up and die. So... They sent, they told me to increase the temperature to 220. And when I did, actually it worked pretty well. Um, we went ahead and printed the cat. And as you can see, the cat came out pretty well. I printed two or three of them and they were working. And I'm like, well, this is great. Uh, I'll just go ahead and in uh, my slicer program, crank the temperature up to 220. And that should take care of everything. But it didn't quite work out that way. When I use Simplify 3D, this is what I was getting. Let me go ahead and zoom in. 
as you can see it goes up maybe 20 layers and then it starts to under extrude and then once it under extrudes um, it actually clogs up and the top never finishes so I went ahead and changed the extrusion multiplier as you can see with this benchy right here it's a mess you can see that it didn't quite go far enough there we go let's see if I can zoom in on that as you can see the deck didn't finish uh, the filament got really small and stringy and then after that it just clogged up again so I asked Creality to send me the FFF file for the G code that they use for the cat. I mean, if I can have that, then I'll just print a 220 for all my, my stuff. And they sent it, but they sent it for a CR10. So it really didn't do me much good. So I follow um, people, and I think it's um, nerdies. Yeah, nerdies. Here we go. Let's see if I can zoom in on that. This guy here is amazing. He's been on since uh, 2007, and he's got a bunch of great tutorials and mega prints and things. Definitely recommend you follow him if you get the chance. And he also has an archive of all his FFF files. So now I'm trying to dial in his FFF files to see if I can get any Benchy to print out at all. So as you can see right now, I'm printing a Benchy, and so far so good. We'll let that print while we're doing the video and see what happens next. Now we're going to go over and talk about my Mega Print and what happened with that and how we're going to fix it. Now for my first Mega Print, um, I was actually just searching for bases for figurines, and as I was going through Thing Thingverse, I came across a Kiko. Um, Akiko is a one piece. It's obviously been designed so there's no supports necessary. And it is silky smooth and it's pretty spectacular the way that it looks. Uh, it reminded me of like a Marvel character. So it's kind of great. So I thought, well, this design is so well put together, it would make a great mega print. So I went ahead and sized it up to 400 millimeters. The, uh, full size of my CR-10 the first time I've done that and it was going to take 73 hours now I did watch it you know five hours 10 hours 20 hours 50 hours everything was going great 60 67 hours I had to work thinking when I get home it's going to be fully made this is what it looked like 67 hours pull it back a little bit pretty great but when I got home Something happened to the head. I don't know if something uh, clogged up the nozzle, but the head itself, let's go and take a look at this. You can see that the head, there we go, got really thin. So it was barely connected to the nozzle at all. So now I have a headless mega print. So, let's see what we're going to do to fix that. On Simplify 3D, I've already brought up the model, as you can see. Once again, pretty amazing model. There we go. But the head, I've got to figure out how to reprint the head, because I don't want to do another 73 hours. So, what you do on the model is find out where it stopped okay now I'm looking for details on the front or back now as you can see at the front around the neck there's not a lot of details that we can use to use as a reference point to start printing but on the back fortunately there are so if I look on the back I see all of this detail back here with the um, straps in the back as I'm looking at my model I see that it looks like right about 
here is where it stopped. So let me zoom in a little bit here. So I'm going to have to go right about here on my bill plate to be able to print out just that part of the head. Because there's, as you can see, there are no other references that I can use. So like we did on the previous video, I'm going to drop it down the build plate, remove, and there she goes. Down, 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 to just about there. So let's go ahead and tilt it so we can get a better idea of what it looks like on the build plate, right there. And we'll zoom it in, and pull it up, there we go. So now we just have a line, and as I'm looking, referencing the model, that seems to be exactly where I want to be in order to print out the shoulders and the head, and not take 73 hours. In fact, this will take, print, print. Yep. but I had a process in there. Okay, got the CR10, that looks good, okay. Um, make sure there's no supports or anything in here, which there's not, perfect. So, let's see what kind of math it does for us here. Three hours and 35 minutes. And three hours and 35 minutes of my book is much better than 73 hours. Let me zoom in on that for you. This as far as it goes. So, if you're printing out any print, it doesn't have to be a mega print, although it is easier to see reference points, but any print that has a problem uh, towards the top of the print itself, it can easily be replaced just by dropping it down past the build plate so you're only printing the parts that you need. Meanwhile, back at the end of two, as we were filming, it did finish. And you can see it was not very successful. It's clogged now. And... Um, the extrusion is horrible on that. So it looks like the Ender 2 is going to be my lifelong hobby. If you guys have had any experiences or know any tips or tricks for getting it to extrude correctly so I can start using it to make prints, go ahead and drop me a line. I'd appreciate it. We can troubleshoot and get this working together. So on today's Thanksgiving episode of Fergie 3D, we took a look at an impossibly cute fidget. We looked at a great mega print and how to fix issues if the head comes off like mine did. And we've looked at an impossibly difficult ender too. Really do appreciate you guys tuning in and have a great holidays. Bye bye.